Hi, this is Jacob with RemoveVirus.org, and today we're going to be taking a look at Win7 Security 2012. Now, Win7 Security 2012 is a multi-rogue malware client. So basically, it goes by several different names. It's installed currently on Windows 7. That's why it's called Windows 7 Security 2012 instead of, let's say, Win XP or XP Security 2012. And it goes by several other names. And basically, it's what this client does is it... It pretends to be a legitimate antivirus client, and it shows you, oh, you're infected with all these viruses, as well as uh, multiple uh, pop-ups that you'll get telling you that you're infected with the virus. Uh, in all actuality, you're not. This program is the virus. Now, one of the most frustrating things about this program is it actually stops most executables from running, so you may not be able to actually run any uh, software programs. It also disassociates uh, .exe files in the Windows registry, and by that I mean uh, any .exe program probably won't run. So if you try to open up, we'll just say uh, Internet Explorer. Let's try to bring that up real quick. And basically, I'm trying to bring it up for us here. There, basically it's saying, oh no, you have a, a keylogger uh, that's it's infected. If you hit continue and protect it, it basically is going to take you to this page right here. And I'm telling you that no, you should register this copy. And it makes it look like Internet Explorer and Microsoft's actually recommending this client, but they are not recommending this client. It's just all part of the scam. And when I try to visit other sites, I want to remove virus.org. We're going to see right here that it's still being blocked, and I can't actually go to another site. Now, one of the first things I'd recommend you do is uh, help resolve this particular issue. And to do that, we can go ahead and just reset our browser. If you wanted, I'm going to go to Tools, Internet Options. And we show this on the removevirus.org under the How-To Guides. If you can get onto a computer that has Internet access, and if you're watching this video, you do have Internet access, you should be able to go in and just reset your browser. I'm not going to delete any of the uh, personal settings. I'm going to try this first. And it looked like even after I did try to reset the uh, the settings on it, I still wasn't able to bring it up, but it was taking me to this page right here still, the Win7 uh, Security 2012. The first thing then that you'll want to do is actually stop this Win7 2012 process from running, and to do that, all you have to really do is we'll go to the Windows Start button, and we're going to actually browse down to one of our folders here. I think I already have it open, the folder path. And it's going to be your computer, C drive, users, your username, app data, local. So we'll actually go through that right now, C drive, users, my username, app data. And if we look right here, app data is a hidden folder. So if you're unable to see this, you can actually just type in app data up above here. Or else, I'll show you another way here in a second. I'll just go in there and find it real quick. We're going to go under local. And currently, this, this file is being called SDW. Chances are it's going to change names, and this is the current icon we have on it. Uh, it looks like this little, I don't know, three pronged circle there. Uh, chances are it's going to change names over the time. One of the best ways to actually identify the file is just search by date modified. So if I did date modified, uh, we can see that today is the 8th. And you're looking right around the day you got infected. So in this case, it was the 7th. So I have it right here. And so what you can do is you can't stop a process that's currently running. So you could either bring up the task manager. I'm going to hold down Control, Escape, Delete. Control, Shift, Escape, I should say. Sorry. And I can actually select that and then end the process. Or another way you can do it is right-click on it and go to Open File Location. And it'll take you right to the file where it is located. Let me go ahead and stop this. And some people won't be able to bring up the task manager to actually remove that process from running. And if you cannot uh, bring up the task manager, what you need to do is actually go to this file location. And then we want to go ahead and right click on the file and just hit rename. And then we're going to be renaming it to whatever we want. Let's try that again here. Rename. And by renaming it, basically, when we change the file name, we're going to be able to reboot our computer. And when it boots back up, it's not going to know what this name is. So we'll, from there, we'll be able to right-click and delete it after you reboot your computer. Now, I was able to stop it with the task manager, so the process is no longer running, so I was able to remove it. And my guess is now I'll be able to get back on the Internet. Let me check. 
and I am able to get back on right now. I went to the removevirus.org website. Everything there seems to be fine. Now, in this particular instance, it looks like executables are still running for us, which means uh, I, I can, at this point in time, run a full antivirus scan. We do recommend SpyroDocker with antivirus. It's one of the better antivirus clients out there that not only does a great job of protecting you on the front end, but is actually capable of, of removing a lot of viruses. So we do like uh, SpyroDocker with antivirus. I also like PCNinja.com and PCNinja com is going to be a remote computer repair company and it's actually able to go out and repair your computer they can remote in uh, the cost is ninety nine dollars which is far cheaper than taking it to a shop and waiting three or four days so you're able to get to it right away now for those who actually do have a problem of no executables being able to run on their computer we do have a fix for Windows 7 up on it and basically it's what this file is it's a zip file so we got to open it up first and you can extract it Here, let me go ahead and just extract it right to the desktop. Basically, what this is is it's a, it's a reg fix that we're just going to merge into the Windows registry. And this, what it'll do is it'll actually go in and reassociate the executable paths. So next time you go to open up an executable program, it'll actually be associated with the correct program and be able to run. So it's successfully added to the registry. And if you wanted to view this file, you can. You can just open it with, uh, we're going to open it with Notepad so you can actually see this file. And we actually did download this directly from the winhelponline.com website forward slash blog. So we want to give them credit for it because I just copied it from there. Uh, why not? And it, it's been tested. It seems to work really well for us. And this is for Windows 7, this particular fix. We're going to have the XP one up in the on the removevirus.org guide under the associated guide for this. And now that we manually deleted the threat and we can go ahead and run uh, antivirus programs again, I highly recommend you go over to the removevirus.org website and actually download SpireDoctor with antivirus. Run a full virus scanner on your computer just to see if you're infected with anything else. It'll also repair any uh, registry damage that's been done uh, to your computer too as well as far as the virus is concerned. And this threat isn't too, too hard to remove once you're able to stop the main executable. That's the main thing. You need to locate and stop the main executable. Once you're able to do that, it's pretty much uh, all downhill from there. It's extremely simple to do. Now on the removevirus.org website, we're going to have list the uh, manual guide will be right here too as well. And that manual guide is going to include this video. It's also going to include any updates that we have on this virus threat. It'll actually include the file locations for you too as well uh, that we find out across the ways. And if you have any questions or need further help, head on over to removevirus.org. Uh, if this video is posted on any social websites such as YouTube, we do not answer questions on YouTube. We only answer them on the removevirus.org website. We just don't have the time to, to filter between five, six different sites to answer people's questions. Plus, most questions will already be answered in the manual guide. So head on over there and that's it for this video. I hope it helps. Take care.